Hello everyone. So welcome to the last section of the first chapter. We're going to talk about sine tables of continuous functions. Sine table of continuous function are really for me up there. You know, when we talk about function in calculus, um, we think about studying them with derivatives and limits and with sine tables. So sine tables are really crucial uh, for, in order to make things work. Um, we're going to talk about sine tables for continuous functions because when functions are not continuous, sine tables they don't really mean anything anymore. So um, we're going to first define in this section what does it mean intuitively or informally, what is a continuous function. And uh, later on in a couple of chapters, we'll introduce the actual definition that comes with uh, limits. So first definition here, what is a continuous function? This is an informal definition. So let f be a function defined at a inside the domain. Um, the, we say that the function is continuous at that point a if we can draw the graph of that function around a without lifting your pen. So it's really a visual definition. Uh, so if you can draw your graph around a point without lifting your pen, then the function is continuous around that point. If you need to lift your pen to draw a point or to draw like another piece of the graph, then the function is not a continuous. Uh, before we look at some examples, just a quick remark here. Like I said, the formal definition is coming in the near future. Uh, our first example, uh, let's go up back to the example one point. One, sorry, 1.2.1 1 and see where is this function continuous. So let's go back up, way up. So 1.2.1, 1. 1.2.2, 1. 2. oh my God, I have a hard time here. So here's our, our function from earlier. Uh, we want to know where is this function continuous. So basically you're just tracing it now. So uh, if I'm tracing it, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my pen down at minus three. So I can put my pen down at minus three. I can draw, I can really trace that graph here. Well, I can trace that graph from minus three to all the way up to zero. So between minus three and zero, there's no problem. We can draw that function without our lifting our pen, but then we need to lift our pen at zero to draw that fat dot. So this function is not continuous at zero because we need to lift the pen at zero. And then you can put the pen down again and between zero and one, there's no problem. And be careful here, even if you can draw the point at one at the end, you still need to lift your pen at one in order to go up near that hollow dot and then continue to draw it all the way up to the end and then you can finish at four. So here within the domain of that function, because this function is defined between minus three and four, but there's two points where the function is not continuous at zero to draw that point here, okay, so to draw that point, and also at one, just to go up to this hollow dot. So there's two points where like, uh, inside the domain where the function is not continuous. So when we look at our pieces, the first piece where it's continuous, it's going to be between minus three, uh, just, sorry, uh, between minus three to zero, and then from zero to one, and then from one to four. So be careful, a common mistake here is to include the one because we can draw it until one, but here the idea of continuity around one is that at one, uh, you can see that the graph has two pieces that are kind of broken, so it's not a continuous graph. Okay, so you cannot trace it without lifting your pen around one. So one is not part of the continuous domain. So um, I'm not sure if I wrote that down in my definition. Let me just go back. Um, where the function is continuous, we're going to call this the continuous domain. So the notation for that, I'm going to add this up here. So the continuous domain, so I'm going to use con f. Okay, so the continuous domain is minus three to zero, open at zero, union zero to one, I'll open, union one to four, I include the endpoints because we stop, we start and we stop there. Next two examples, we have two functions defined visually, and we're going to um, compute the domain of these functions, the range of these functions, and the continuous domain of these uh, functions. So, for the first one, 
uh, when I look at the domain, uh, I can see that the function uh, f, the first function, uh, is defined everywhere, ex I mean, from 0 to 7. So if I draw this domain here, uh, let's, let's use the same color scheme here. So uh, at 0, there's an output all the way up to 7. So the first domain here, so it would be boom okay from 0 to 7 including 0 excluding 7 what about the range here well the smallest possible value the smallest possible value is this whole dot here so it starts at 1 on in, not including 1 and then i can scan it okay so this graph has a, has a, has y values all the way up to the top here at five so here for the range what do we get uh we get the following sorry let me see let me see let me see okay here we go copy so range poof okay from one to five and then now the continuous domain so for the continuous domain the trick is just be a tracer, okay, try to trace your graph here and just think about when you need to lift your pen and these points where you need to lift your pen are not part of the continuous domain. So we start at zero, okay, so we can draw the point here at zero, then we can draw the graph all the way up to one without lifting the pen, but then at one there's a whole dot and we need to lift the, the, the pen here to draw that fat dot. So one, the function is not continuous at one, and then from one, there's no problem. I can trace this from one. Yee -hee. A little fun here, all the way up to six. Be careful, even if we have a full dot at six, we need to lift our pen to go to the second branch. So it's not continuous at one, and it's not continuous at at uh, six. And of course, it's not continuous at seven, just because seven is not part of the domain of definition. Of this function. So here, if you're wondering what is the continuous domain, here we go. Boom. Okay, so it's from 0 to 1, uh, excluding 1, union 1 to 6, excluding 6, union 6 to 7, excluding 7. So that's your continuous domain. Now let's do the same thing for the second graph. Um, Let's find the domain first. Uh, let's use blue for the domain. So it starts here at zero, but it starts with a hollow dot. And then we have outputs everywhere, all the way up to seven. Okay, so that's for the domain here. So this means that the domain is from zero excluded to seven included, boom. Okay, that's my domain. What about the range here? Let's do it in orange. So the smallest possible value is at one here, and I can go all the way up to five, but at five we have a hollow dot. So this means that the range of this function is boom, okay, from one included to five, excluded and now the interesting part is of course of course the continuous domain the domain of continuity so here uh, again here's just a question of tracing so it starts at zero it's not including zero because it's not part of the domain but from zero all the way to to two but at two i need to lift my pen to draw that fat dot here and then i can draw that function continuously from two all the way up to the end to seven. So it's not continuous at zero because zero is not part of the domain, but it's continuous between zero to two. At two, I need to lift my pen to draw that dot. And then between two and seven, I can do it in one shot. So this means that the continuous domain is boom. Okay, from zero to two excluded. So zero excluded, two excluded union, two excluded, two seven included. And that's your continuous domain. So it's really supposed to be a definitive, an intuitive definition for continuity. Just think about, okay, when I'm tracing these functions, where do I need to lift? When do I need to lift my pen? As soon as you need to lift, lift your pen to drive a function around a point, then it's not part of the domain of the continuous domain.